going to have something called a spine. A spine, we might say, sort of begins at our back. Maybe it begins at the pelvis. I don't know, but that isn't too important. Right now, we just want to say we've got a spine. And this spine has three bumps on it. One is a rib cage. One is a pelvis. And of course, one is a head. And that could be any one of many animals. Let's start with the simplest things we can. The simplest things we can would be things like the fact that we walk around on two legs. And quadrupeds, pretty evident by their name, walk around or run around or trot around on four legs. We'll use a dog as an example. The first thing I'd notice is that this spine as a whole is more convex to the top than people think it is. Why? Because they look at the outline and they say it's concave. And they don't understand that these little bumps on here are not part of the spine's strength. They aren't part of the building. They're more of the ornament on the building. The contour is concave. The spine is a continuous thing. The spine is going from holding that neck to holding that ribcage to lower back to sacrum, which we have, and then the extension of the sacrum to make the tail. That can be a very important line of construction, a line of action for animators. It squashes and stretches. This animal has a network of muscles in that neck that can stretch that head out like that or even rear that head back like that because there's a tremendous amount of movement in these cervical vertebrae. Cervical means of the neck.